And I said, man, I got to do something about what I feel inside. He said, what do you mean? I said, I want to meet this Jesus you've been telling us about. It was just another summer night. Had to be the last thing on my mind. Mm-hmm. Since that night he met Jesus, Toby Mack has gone on to sing about Jesus to millions of people around the world. He's our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. Toby Mack's going to share the story of how he made the decision to give his life to Jesus. And it's our hope that his story will also encourage you or anyone who's ever just quietly and faithfully obeyed and told someone about Jesus. GPS. God. People. Stories. If Toby Mac is not the single most successful artist in modern Christian music history, he is certainly on the very short list. First, there was DC Talk with bandmates Kevin Max and Michael Tate. Then there's his solo career. That started after DC Talk went on an extended and ongoing intermission, as they call it. Between his solo career and the time with DC Talk, Toby Mac has sold more than 11 million albums and won seven Grammys. And there's a whole other list of awards as well. All of Toby Mac's music is created to glorify Jesus. He grew up knowing Jesus as the Son of God, but he didn't get to know Jesus personally until he was 13 years old. And back in those days, Toby Mac was known just as Toby McKeon. When I was a kid, I have three siblings, so the four of us, my mom would drag us to church every Sunday, and we didn't like it. We didn't want to be there. We didn't know about youth group. She would just take us in the big service and put us down in these pews. And to us, there was a guy behind a box yelling at us. So we just didn't like it. And uh, my dad never went. He always slept in. Toby McKeon grew up in Fairfax, Virginia. That's just outside of Washington, D.C. And he loved to play basketball. One Sunday after church, this guy taps me on the shoulders, a really small church. And the guy asked me if I'd like to go to a camp that summer. And I, I kind of looked at my mom, and evidently she knew him. And I said, well, what kind of camp? And he kind of alluded to the fact that it was a basketball camp. So I ended up going to the camp with a few friends. We loaded up this van a few months later that summer, and it wasn't actually a basketball camp. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there was a lot of preaching and preaching and preaching, but we did get to play some basketball. But, it, you know, it was fun. We had a good time. In Toby's 13-year-old mind, being told it was a camp where they could play some basketball apparently translated into basketball camp. But what we really, or what I really took away from that camp was each night in our cabin, it would be four guys and myself and a youth pastor. I didn't know he was a youth pastor, but I guess he had just volunteered recently at that church. And we would sit down on the floor of that cabin, and he would just open up the Bible. And, um, you know, I knew what the Bible was. I'd never really read it. I'd heard about it. I'd heard maybe certain scriptures. But suddenly, in those nights, after all the festivities were over, just sitting on that floor with that guy, he would open up the Word, and it came to life for me. God used that time, as Toby puts it, to start knocking on his heart's door. And I don't know why it was any different other than just something special happened. And uh, it was the Friday night. Uh, we'd just gotten up off sitting on the floor and reading together. And this guy also would share with us, by the way, about, you know, things he had been through, the hard things he had been through in life. Anyway, we got up off the floor on Friday night, and my heart was pounding out of my chest because I wanted to react You know, I wanted to do something about this feeling I had inside. I um, just got my sleeping bag as quickly as I could, and I remember just zipping it all the way to the top. Toby stayed there, zipped up in his sleeping bag for about 20 minutes. Then he says he just couldn't take it anymore. My heart was pounding. I was, I needed God. So I unzipped the sleeping bag, and I walked in the other room, and I woke up that youth pastor, and I said, hey, man, I got to do something about what I feel inside. He said, what do you mean? I said, I want to meet this Jesus you've been telling us about. It was just another summer night. Had to be the last thing on my mind. Mm-hmm. When love and uh, he said, would you like to pray? And I said, yes. And I, I'll never forget it. 
You know, I remember the bedspread that I put my elbows on, the wooden floor that my knees went down to, and we just sat there, or just got on our knees, and he led me in a prayer, and I asked Jesus to be my Lord. And um, it changed everything for me. It was a life-changing night for some other people, too. I remember when I got up, I walked into the other room, and I, I was like right on the bubble. Should I wake all my boys up and tell them what just happened, or should I just get back in my bed. I chose to get back in my bed or in my sleeping bag. And two other guys that night actually asked Christ into their life in that cabin. So one summer night, three young men discovered hope and peace and eternal life with God, all because of a volunteer youth pastor's faithfulness to tell them about Jesus and about making him their Lord. And we know now that God would eventually use Toby to impact many, many people around the world for Jesus. But first, God used him to impact someone in his own home, right down the hall from his bedroom. I went home and started inviting my dad to church. And my dad at the time, he was, he was a realtor in the D.C. area where I grew up, but he also owned part of a bar. He was, you know, he was a little bit of a wild child. <laughs> And I just kept inviting my dad to church. My mom would ask me to go down and ask my dad every Sunday morning. And I would remember like walking down the hall to wake up my dad kind of scared. Like, I don't know why it was scary. My dad was a good dude, but it was just scary to wake your dad up and say, will you come to church? He had told me no so many times. But a few months later, my dad said yes. And he went to church and he actually, uh, it was maybe three months after me asked, Jesus into his life, and it changed our family forever, and I'm thankful. Toby's dad passed away in the spring of 2015. The song, Love Feels Like, from Toby's album, This Is Not a Test, was inspired, at least in part, by Toby's time helping to take care of his sick dad. Toby recorded the song with DC Talk bandmates Kevin Max and Michael Tate. This is harder than I thought, harder than I thought it'd be, harder than I thought, taking every part of me, harder than I thought, so much harder than I thought it'd be, and these never felt so full. A few years after he accepted Christ at that summer camp when he was 13, Toby McKeon went to Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. That's where he met Kevin and Michael. Toby's music encourages and challenges those who do and don't yet follow Jesus Christ. If you're among that latter group, those who aren't following Jesus, but you are stirred to want to know more about him, then visit us online. The uh, website address is billygramradio.org. When you get there, look for Grow Your Faith. Click on that. And if you are a follower of Christ, we celebrate with you. Billygramradio.org is still a great place for you. You can be challenged and encouraged by the content that you will hear there. Again, billygramradio.org. We've got a couple more Toby Mac memories to share, but these ones aren't from Toby. They're from Michael Tate. That's coming up in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. You're searching for something that can satisfy that deepest longing that you have. Billy Graham. I tried for years as a young person. I just couldn't find it. Until one night, I went to a meeting like this, not near this big, and the minister opened the Bible and spoke from the Bible and When he asked people to receive Christ into their heart, he asked them to come forward and stand. I did it. And I never dreamed what God had planned ahead for me, that I would meet people all over the world and become friends with people in many countries. How could a farm boy from North Carolina ever dream of such a thing? God has done that. And I give him the glory and the credit for it. But it, but it started It started with just a simple commitment as a teenager. Now, God can do the same for you, except much more, if you let him. And now back to the hosts of GPS, 
Jim Kirkland, and Phil Fleischman. This podcast is just one way the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association tells people about Jesus Christ. Some of the other ways are Franklin Graham Festivals, the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team Chaplain Ministry, and Internet Evangelism. Yes, Internet Evangelism. God has used that particular outreach to bring more than 7 million people into a relationship with Jesus in the space of only about five years. Think about that, 7 million people. How would you like to be a part of that ministry? You can apply to be a volunteer with it as an online counselor, a discipleship coach, or an email responder. All you need to do is go to billygramradio.org and then look for the What We Do tab across the top. Under there, you'll see Internet Evangelism. Our guest on this episode of GPS has been Toby Mack. He grew up in Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. His D.C. talk bandmate, Michael Tate, grew up north of the Potomac, right in the heart of D.C. on Capitol Hill. But Michael says they never met each other until college. We went to Rival High School. I went to Riverdale. He went to Bethlehem. Okay. And they play, he played on the basketball team, and I was in the choir, so okay. we didn't really cross paths. But boy, was there an explosion of friendship, and a quick friendship, when we met at Liberty, our freshman year. He was a sophomore, I was a freshman. And uh, we do them together, and we started DC Talk. Usually singers were separate from the athletes, but they put us together, and Toby and I were just we were two peas in the pot, man. Just the best of buds. I love him so much. And who knew that all these years later, DC Talk would spawn so many younger bands and music and... Toby Mac and me with Newsboys. If you want to steal my show, sit back and watch you go. If you got something to say, go on and take it away. By the way, DC Talk is performing live for the first time in years next summer on the Jesus Freak Cruise. Uh, and one other side note about Toby Mac's family. He and his wife, Amanda, have five children. Two kids, as a matter of fact, have appeared on some of Toby's albums. Thanks for being with us for this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and TuneIn Radio, and also at BillyGramRadio.org. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Billy Graham Radio. Would you tell a friend about us? Thanks. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I am Jim Kirkland. Thank you for being here. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. It's you.